Uh, yeah, as was mentioned, so I'm, I'm from ABRSM, uh, if you don't know, with the Associated Board Royal Schools of Music. And, and as was mentioned there, 125 years old this year. So we've been assessing kids uh, and music uh, for a long time. We're the world's largest music examination and assessment uh, body, uh, running 650,000 exams a year in 93 countries worldwide. Uh, and uh, this is Pete uh, from Attic Media. Right. I, don't you, I don't know if you've got a few words about uh, Attic. Very yeah, different organisation. Um, we, we're not quite as old. Uh, we're about 16-year-old digital agency, and we um, do a lot of work in um, specifically related to education, but anything digital, really. Um, yeah, and uh, okay. we, we've been working with Stuart on, uh, on this project. Yeah, for, for, for quite a while. Um, <laughs> yes. So as well as the kind of performance exam, you know, a kid doing their grade three practical in front of a, an examiner, we also have a, a, an exam in theory. And that's pretty much, if you can see that on the screen, I can't see what you're seeing, but that's pretty much how theory exams happen and have happened uh, for 100 years. Uh, in essence, theory is a compulsory element. We, we ask people to take their grade five theory if they're going to go on to grade six practical. And it deals with the, um, the rudimentary and the not so rudimentary um, aspects of music making in the Western classical tradition. So things like rhythm, intervals, harmony, beaming and grouping, the kind of the grammar, if you like, of, uh, of, of that kind of music. Now grade five, kind of the pinnacle of the grade five passport exam onto grade six practical, is a melody writing question, uh, where they're given a two bar opening and the candidate's asked to complete it and write an eight bar melody based from that starting point. And it's not easy, it's a summation of kind of all their theoretical knowledge up to that point over the last five years. And for our young learners, it presents quite a big challenge because they, they often fall uh, down on the sort of rudimentary things that they ought to consider and they tend to forget in the heat of the exam, things that in other question types they do very well. And also they often struggle to audiate or hear what they're writing in their head as they write it, because this is obviously a pen and paper exercise. And it's a shame because it's a big ticket um, exam question. It's worth 15 marks in the exam. And if you look at that example there from our e-marker system where our exams are marked online by examiners, um, there's a few rudimentary er errors there that results in a very low mark of six. So we've developed with Attic Media Melody Writer to help us tackle those two things. One is to keep kids on track as they're learning the skills of melody writing through uh, keeping on track of the rudimentary grammatical errors, the theoretical ones, but also helping them develop their audiation skills so they can write better, more pleasing melodies at the same time. So at this point, if we switch from here, we'll, we'll give you a quick demo. It's, in, it's a browser-based application. And I thought what I'll do is I'm just going to kind of randomly stab in a typical melody. Hopefully you can see that. No. Hold on no, we're we not seeing that. I won't be able to see it. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, hang on. Let me just try. <laughs> I just warn you now, this won't be the most sonically beautiful thing you've heard this afternoon. Uh, it's a very different beast. Okay. Okay, can we see that? Yeah. So unlike other packages that may have similarities to look at, you know, the Sibeliuses and the Finales of the world, engraving packages, they make theoretical decisions for the user as they go along. That is kind of their intention. We need the candidate to be able to make mistakes and to be able to put in as freely as they would with a pencil their own melody. So that includes things like adding a bar line, which can be added any way you like. So I'm, I'm just going to merrily put in a few notes. We can make a note shorter quite easily, lower longer, uh, have a bar line wherever I want one. And a few more notes, and a bar line. Let's make that note longer. And when I press play, we, we give feedback to the, the candidate at every time they play the melody to help them keep on track. <laughs> So the first thing that's picked up on is that uh, there's an error of one of the bars doesn't add up correctly, so the intention would be that the candidate would correct that as they're working. <laughs> then 
Then it moves into more subtle things, so noticing that the beaming is incorrect, for example, there. So if I just carry on and add a few more notes. Making this very simple for speed. Best rhythm in the uh, melody in the world. Okay, prompting me to carry on. Very often we see candidates who don't actually finish their melodies. <laughs> so it's quite flexible jumping around the, the bars in a way that you couldn't do in Sibelius, for example. <laughs> And it's asking me about a very common mistake for getting the double bar line. So you can see it's a gradual process uh, intended to keep the, the learner on track. At any point, if they don't understand a prompt, they can use the learn section here, apologies for these uh, missing graphics, uh, to explore the topic in more detail. So we call these things prompts or guidance, and I'll just hand over to Pete now to talk in a bit more detail about how those work and what the challenges have been. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so it's... Uh... It was a really interesting challenge because um, the display of the music, you, I don't know if anyone was particularly interested in this at this level, but um, we use a music XML based um, display system to write out the music. And that is all about how it's written. Um, but that's not actually about entirely what it means when we, uh, we need to do quite a bit of comprehension on that to understand what the notes are, where the beaming should be, um, which is not exactly what you need to know when you're trying to print it out and display it. So, um, uh, we, one of the most interesting bits, what were the prompts um, that... Um, that we created. So, we need to analyze what is displayed and then turn and comprehend that in terms of what, what notes you're actually going to get and then, and then work on those to try and understand uh, whether, whether the music is, it has flaws in it. Um, so I've written an extra new prompt here um, which just looks for C sharps, for example. Quite um, Quite, quite randomly. Yes, I mean, there's no, there's no reason to particularly disallow more than three C, C sharps, but this is the kind of thing we do um, for the rest of the beaming groups and, uh, and the counting of the bars and so on. Um, in, and I can show you that uh, working. If I start a new one. Uh, it was particularly interesting as a programmer because I'm not a musician, so I had to learn an awful lot about uh, music. So you can see there, there's three, three C sharps. And you get, you get a particularly, <laughs> you get that particular prompt saying, you know, you've got a lot of C sharps in there. Um, that's a programmer's joke, sorry. Uh, I'm not a very good one at that, but... Um, <laughs> um, What's interesting is that uh, the way we need to look at that is to count up, are there accidentals, the sharps being called accidentals, um, in the music. Now, because of the way the rules around music, there is an accidental on the first one um, and not on the others, the other Cs, but in the same bar, they are, will still be sharp. And there's a lot of those kind of rules where we only track what is displayed the, act, the first accidental, but we need to understand what that means musically, which means the rest of these two notes will also be sharp. And obviously there's other, I mean, you, you mentioned a few other examples. Accidentals are a good example because where they're written affects the bar moving forward. Um, but we, we allow, for instance, uh, a candidate to add more accidentals than they need. So in that case, we need to sort of look at the fact there's an accidental there, understand what that does to the pitch of the note, allow it to render the accidental, and then use that information mixed with sort of theory rules to then prompt the user appropriately and say that whilst that, we can play that and it makes some sense, it's not the grammatical yeah. um, perfect solution that uh, they need to put in the exam. Yeah, so that's really, um, 
that was, you know, that, that's sort of one of the hardest parts of what we're doing, as well, along with lots of other technical challenges around displaying a score and playing it back with uh, reasonably high quality sound fonts and uh, we do a lot of work. I don't know if anyone's interested in that aspect of things, like technically how this works, do feel free to ask any questions. Um, but there isn't really anything like this in the browser at the moment, so. Yeah. The, the, it's the, the obvious similarity, as I said before, between it and engraving packages uh, isn't there when you delve in because the, the ability to, the flexibility of you know, adding a bar line wherever I want one, that kind of thing. Um, is a big difference. So just a, sort of a final thing to show you here, you may have noticed this um, visualization pane, which isn't showing us a great deal in this couple of bars, um, but another piece of work we've been doing in tandem, yeah, if we can just flip back, is working on uh, visualizations. And so that, that one was a very simple visualization that just showed the contour of the melody that helps learners you know, shape the rise and fall of it. But we've also got others that um, we hope to bring online shortly, uh, pitch repetition, Rhythm repetition uh, really help when we prompt the user about thinking about those things. A nice graphical representation helps understand the structure of your melody. An implied harmony, the, um, the blue boxes there, is, is a real challenge. Trying to work out what the harmonization of that melody may be just from a melodic line. So taking a single line and then deriving an implied harmony from it to help the candidate think about where the, the chord progression would be. Uh, if there was one. And at the bottom, a step and leap, because uh, we like to encourage the candidates not to write a very stepwise uh, melody, but have some intervallic interest in it. So that's kind of where it is. Um, so essentially, it helps learners work on real exam questions or very open access. They can start from a blank stave if they want to, uh, prepare for the exam in the sense of the rudimentary grammatical, theoretical side of things, and help them develop their audiation skills at the same time. Uh, don't know if, anyone, if anyone has any questions, please fire them away at us. Otherwise, go and try it, if you like. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's free, do. it's kind of in a pu public beta. Uh, we're working on it still. There's still kind of improvements coming along. But uh, if you go to abrsm.org slash melodywriter, um, sign up and have a go.